Hello, I'm Colleen Holder and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're coming to you from the Buku Integrated Facility located in the picturesque idyllic village of Buku. Here, locals and visitors can do any number of things. It's a place for entertainment, but if you're just hoping to get away and recharge your batteries, there's something here for you as well. We'll give you a tour as our show continues, but first, let's take a look at our stories this week. Tobago joins the fight against domestic violence and the push for gender equality. This island hosts this year's Caribbean conference, putting the brakes on road carnage in Tobago. And what's in store for you at this year's goat and crab races? It's happening in the east, on the hill, on the waterfront, on the beach. It takes on the world. It's got pizzazz. It's a fiesta and it's truly an amazing island experience. It's food, fashion, and it's fabulous. The Tobago Jazz Experience, April 20th to April 28th. Much more than music. The data is startling. According to the World Bank, women between the ages of 15 and 44 are more at risk from rape and domestic violence than they are from cancer, car accidents, war, or even from contracting malaria. In fact, every year, millions of women and girls worldwide experience violence in some form. The United Nations says violence affects women from before birth to old age. It's this frightening picture that's driving the push to end domestic violence and, by extension, gender inequality, a fight this island continues to support. So much so, it hosted some of the region's advocates and think tanks to discuss solutions. Davia Chambers attended the three-day conference and filed this report. This is the scar of violence against women, the face of a woman. This woman nose is cut. Her face is burned by her husband because her husband felt that she was unfaithful to him. That's just one of many stories of females who have been killed or viciously attacked by males as gender-based violence continues. Data from the Crime and Problem Analysis Unit of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service shows that over the decade from 2001 to 2011, on average, 25 persons were murdered each year as a result of domestic violence. But Dr. Gabriel says there are also many fatal health outcomes. Dr. Gabriel says that violence against women is a widespread, public, health and human rights problem. So how do we prevent domestic violence and save women? There are promising interventions. With these promising interventions, we could work on empowering women, transforming harmful gender norms. He made it clear that violence against women can and must be prevented. And it appears the message is already making an impact. These participants gave tips on how domestic violence can be halted. Men need to step up and treat women differently. We need to leave an example for girls as well, for boys and girls. Speak out, ask for help, um, and uh, be uh, willing to uh, talk about the experiences you've had. For the 2010 to 2011 law term period in our country, close to 12,000 new domestic violence cases were filed. Over a one-year period from 2010 to 2011, reports of domestic violence in Tobago almost tripled. The Caribbean Conference on Domestic Violence and Gender Inequality's goal is to increase awareness and highlight the problem of domestic violence across the Caribbean region. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. About seven years ago, the Tobago Community Emergency Response Team, also known as CERT, was created. Its parent body, the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, wanted to ensure there were trained and certified persons able to respond quickly, but also in an efficient and reliable way if there's an emergency or disaster in rural communities. Today, CERT has grown into an agency in its own right. Its director describes it as the new face of emergency management, and they're on a mission to get you involved. Omadar Mills explains. 40 community emergency response technicians. 
They are fully trained in disaster events such as the extraction of vehicles in accidents, water rescues, and mass casualty management. These technicians are part of CERT's team that ensures the island is prepared for any kind of natural or man-made hazard. We are offering to the world a well-conceived and tested program, a concept that is well-trained, well-tooled, well-armed and ready to provide not just our locality, but also the rest of the world with what we think is the new face of emergency management. Initially, CERT was a voluntary body aiding communities in natural disasters, but it has since evolved and matured into a professional arm of the emergency responders on the island, with 24 hours service centers in Speyside and Mariah. This CERT water rescue technician says he joined because he liked the extensive training he was able to receive in various emergency situations. So it's like a premier agency that out of Tima that shows an, an experience that is beyond that what I've seen before. Right? It's not like fire service, it's not like army or anything like that. It has, everybody there is crushing, everybody is equipped with information that most of these agencies do not really have access to. Brittany Toby wanted to become a team member of CERT because she saw it as a way of giving meaningful community service. I chose to become a CERT technician because as I was growing up, um, my cousin was a part of CERT and I saw CERT to be a big help of Tobago and I decided that I love my country and I would like to help Tobago as well. But CERT is not just about helping Tobagonians in times of disasters. CERT's supervisor Brendan Timothy says the technicians are there to empower and educate the population in protecting and preserving their own lives and property. These hazards can directly affect us, affect our livelihood, affect our families. That's why we are here as a CERT team, as a CERT program, the responding arm of TEMA, to encourage you to put systems in place that will help you recover from losses. In doing so, in doing so, you will contribute to the true resilience of the island, of the country. CERT was first launched in 2006. This relaunch is part of a three-month community campaign series to create awareness on the need for proper emergency response on the island. I'm Umidar Mills for Let's Talk to Bego. Affordable housing solutions for Tobagonians and some homeowners didn't even have to leave their communities to get it. More than 100 persons have been given home improvement grants that are expected to improve the quality of their lives. Let's join Sophie Guillaume who attended the formal handing over ceremony to hear how the money will be used. Well, I um, appreciate the check from the Division of Labour and Sacraments very much, THG, thank them for it. I think it's a great idea and I hope that um, the program continue and uh, uh, other people in Tobago will take advantage of it. I feel wonderful of receiving my check and I'm going to use it for the rest of renovation onto my building. The Administrator for Settlements and Labour, Nevlin Renrick, is urging the recipients to put the money to its intended use. Some people access the funding and sometimes as humans we tend to err and you do all manner of things with it, except what you came into the office for. We are not only building houses, we are building communities, we are building families, we are building the union. We are, we are here to support you. The division distributed checks in the areas of Moriah, Argyle and Scarborough, where the recipients expressed their gratitude toward the initiative. I feel wonderful. I feel happy. One of the happiest days of my life. And I'm going to use it to redo my, when I say redo my house, it's board, but I'm changing the board to concrete because of the termites. So I'm very happy and thankful for this. I want to say that this assembly, you know, they've been doing a good job through the Division of Settlement and Labor in making these opportunities this time so possible so that we can receive these grants in order to help us to move along the way. I'm really happy for this because I did apply a while for a while 
And um, when I got the call that it was, I was re they were ready for me, I was happy, and I'm happy about the whole thing. The division has been distributing checks since the start of the year, but this batch, which consists of 165 recipients, received a total of a little over $1.2 million. Sophie Guillaume, let's talk to Bego. We're taking a break, but do stay with us. On the other side, a campaign to end road carnage begins in Tobago. Your viewing Let's Talk Tobago, thanks for staying with us. Today we're at the Buku Integrated Facility. It's close to the beach and it's a cultural icon of sorts. The facility offers shade, shelter and a beautiful ambient environment with a spectacular vista. But there's more. Visitors who are interested in learning the art of making craft or simply a Thai massage can do that right here. Stay with us as we continue to explore the facility. But now we want to turn your attention to a groundbreaking regional energy infrastructure project that has the potential to reshape the Caribbean market. And it's a project that's being done right here in Tobago. Davia Chambers explains. In about three years, Tobago will be able to export gas and its first customer is one of our CARICOM neighbors. Most of the, 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 the technical infrastructure uh, for the start of the project is there. Uh, we were given the assurance that uh, the marketing aspect of it is also going well. And if there are no snags, that somewhere between uh, in 2014, uh, they should start the construction and installation work. Uh, and there should be first gas to Barbados in 2016. But how will the average Tobagonian fit into this plan? We did discuss, of course, I mean, that, that would obviously be one of the, the items down for discussion, how does Tobago benefit directly? And although you recognize that, uh, you know, the energy sector is really quite capital intensive, but we started discussions and uh, over the next many months we'll be looking at uh, various ways by which uh, Tobagonians or and Tobago in general can benefit uh, from from this project, whether it is in providing ancillary services or in having you know young Tobagonians trained or apprentice. The project is estimated to cost just about three hundred thousand U.S. dollars. In phase one. Eastern Caribbean Gas Pipeline Company will construct and operate a 300-kilometer natural gas pipeline from the Cove Point Estate in Tobago to Barbados. Phase 2 of the project involves extending the pipeline from Barbados to other Eastern Caribbean islands. The pipeline is expected to significantly lower the cost of producing electricity in other countries. The economic benefits from exporting natural gas are substantial, billions of dollars and of course job creation. It's hoped it will be no different here in Tobago, especially with the evidence suggesting that natural gas is the most important energy source for the future. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. Manufacturers have been making cars with more tech and safety features specifically designed to save lives. What was once luxury is almost standard now. The average vehicle has features such as anti-lock braking system, electronic stability control and traction control, just to name a few. Truth be told, millions have been spent in research and development to make driving a safer experience. Yet road fatalities around the world continue to climb. Well, there's an international campaign to stop the carnage, a campaign that's now in Tobago. Lisa Marie Bonaparte tells us more. The United Nations says that around the world, 1.27 million people lose their lives annually by automobile accidents. But it's hoping to change this picture and save some 5 million lives. It's the reason the international organization has declared 2011 to 2020 the decade of action on road safety. Here at home, the Ministry of Transport is adopting and implementing a national road safety campaign as part of their drive to save lives, and they have brought it to this island. Road safety is all of us business. Um, as a mass taxi driver and 
president of the association. This morning, it gave me a very deep sense of responsibility as far as road safety is concerned. Motor vehicles do not lie down in hospital beds. And when you pull that draw in the autopsy room, it's not a motor vehicle that is coming out. The acting assistant chief fire officer of Tobago says many do not understand the effects of a fatal accident. If we can reduce the incidence of accidents on the road, it therefore means that the economy would be better off, our people would be mentally stable, and therefore we have some families. He says up until now, his department had focused on fire safety in schools, but that will change to give more prominence to the issue of road safety. The principal of Wim Anakin School agrees that educating students about the topic helps. We are here as part of the road safety campaign. These students use the road every day. They walk to and from school. So it is important that they know what is necessary for road safety. Often, complaints about reckless driving are directed at the public transport system. But so far, Tobago has been able to avoid the stain something the PTSU wants to ensure stays that way. The corporation is training its drivers with the use of the bus simulator, the first of its kind in the Caribbean. They have been part of the exercise of retraining and retooling as part of delivering a customer service that is on par. This national road safety campaign is part of the central government's commitment to reduce the carnage on the nation's roads. I am Lisa Marie Bonaparte for Let's Talk Tobago. And there's another initiative to save lives, but this one deals with the issue of crime and providing alternative options to those involved and those who might be thinking of it. We're referring to the Citizen Security Program that operates in three communities in Tobago. Sophie Guillaume tells us about the somewhat unconventional methods being used by the organizers. The All Force Competition is just one of the activities in the Citizen Security Street Education Initiative. But this is the first time it's been done on this scale. We did it last year in the months of April, May, um, but we did it just as a one-day exercise and we only had the aspect where we did the caravan style thing and the house to house visits. This time we've added this element of it, so we're really testing this for the first time to see how it works with the community. Um, again, I said our core um, focus is building the relationships that we can deepen the exchange with the community in terms of treating with their safety and their security issues. The CNB Crown Court and Span Tent in Bonner Court was the venue for the All Force competition, which featured teams from the program's partnering agencies, such as Fire Services and the Division of Youth Affairs. We are here from the agencies and we are playing with the community just to develop relationships with them. We have the aerobic burnout. Again, it's not necessarily a competition, but it's fun. The Citizen Security Program focuses on three communities in Tobago and 19 in Trinidad with the aim of reducing crime one community at a time. This street education initiative will continue in the months of April and May in the Bethel and Glenroe Dal Spring communities. The Citizen Security Program was launched in 2009. I'm Sophie Guillaume for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take another break, but stay with us. Coming up, what's in store for you this Easter weekend? Sit Tobago, ready to provide your community with the highest degree of professional services in emergency response. Contact Sit Mariah at 660-0065 or Sit Speyside at 660-6096. Sit 24 hour services, emergencies, medical or other. Sit Pro, the new face of emergency management. This is Let's Talk Tobago. Welcome back. We're at the Buku Integrated Facility, a place that hosts sports, conferences, concerts, dog shows, exhibitions, weddings, and yes, the famous Sunday school parties and goat races. And this takes us right into our next story. As you're well aware, the place to be on Easter Tuesday is right here for the Goat and Crab Race Festival. Let's join Davia Chambers to find out why this year promises to be even better. Guest houses are booked. Goats are set and ready to go, along with their owners. 
This year's Buku Goat and Crab Race Festival will be even better than last year's. This is so because of an added contribution from the Tobago House of Assembly. The monies that we would have collected would have been for sponsorship of an A-class race um, and it would be used for that. We would have increased on prices last year, so it's just to continue to ensure that the races have a certain standard and the good owners would have um, been able to capitalize on you know, better prices and in general the contribution would also help in keeping the event active. Ms. Ramsawak says the $6,000 won't just benefit the festival, but the community as a whole. What we try to do is really get the entire community involved. On that day, you have over 5,000 people that actually come into the facility, and even from the Easter Sunday night with the Boku Sunday School. So the bar, the bar um, owners, the guest houses, uh, all the little shops in the area, shows, vendors, delights, all of those small business owners would benefit from the influx of persons from Trinidad and from the outside. With that, she expects more persons to be at the event. Particularly, we are focusing this year on the street parade. We have included a lot of the um, carnival culture, the mud, mud, modern mud. We have included modern mud. We have included some mass characters. So we're trying pan as usual, tambour bamboo, drumming. So we are, we're trying to expand on the street parade and to get more people to come out. At the end of the show, there'll be an after show with soca artists to add more flavor to the event. The Champ of Champs and Buku Derby are the most anticipated races of the day. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. And we're staying with our Easter celebrations a while longer. Tobago is the place residents of the Sister Isle as well as international visitors flock to for this long weekend. It's a destination of choice to enjoy the sun, sand and sea. And this Easter will be no different. As you head out to the beach, let's share with you some of the measures in place to ensure your time is safe and enjoyable. As the Easter weekend in Tobago continues to attract visitors from Trinidad as well as overseas, safety on the island's beaches will be a priority. In anticipation of the increased amount of visitors on the island during the holiday weekend, lifeguard supervisor Cecil Murray says there will be a vivid presence of lifeguards to prevent any unlikely danger. We have nine beaches that we service with lifeguards. Lifeguards usually work from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on a daily basis. All right? Lifeguards are equipped with things such as rescue cans, whistles, pocket masks. They even are trained as first aiders. On the beaches, we have first aid kits, spinal boards, just in case of an emergency. Patrol Captain Sean Shangi says lifeguards are trained and ready for any mishap at sea. Patrol Captain Shangi had some advice for beachgoers. If the beach is a little rough, we'll have what you call rip current. Uh, rip currents are simply a body of water that is coming to shore and it will take you back out. When you look in the water, you will see a brownish area that is just the sand mixing up in the water. If you are standing in a rip, you need to move to the side and allow the rip to pass. If you are caught in a rip, you just swim along with the rip, off to the side and back to shore. If you still cannot do either of those, the lifeguard will be there to assist you. Whether the Easter weekend is spent on the island's beaches, going to the famous goat races or enjoying other outdoor activities, Locals and visitors alike should follow the road rules and pay attention to those in authority to ensure a safe and memorable Easter weekend in Tobago. From the Division of Tourism and Transportation, I'm Julia James reporting for Let's Talk Tobago. But our best beaches won't be enough to attract and keep tourists coming if our service industry isn't up to international standards. It's a concept the Division of Tourism and Transportation understands all too well. It's been investing in the human resources on the island to ensure the visitor experience is second to none. Juliet James explains. These are the new additions to the tourism sector. They are graduates from the Tobago Hospitality and the Tourism Institute, THTI. They have been trained in areas of business communication, customer service, protocol and dining etiquette. 
and now with certificates in hand, they say they intend to apply what they have learned in the world of work. The course was beneficial and it would enhance us because we work out there in the communities with the people. I enjoy doing this, right? So it has helped me to feel more confident about myself. This training would have been beneficial for us to improve our skills, to improve the way we deal with, with people. I decided it best to have it done in order to facilitate and aid staff in giving out exceptional customer service. The chairman of the board of THTI, Dr. Verlene Bob Lewis, says the service provided and the experience visitors have while in Tobago is critical to building the tourism product. The one receptionist, the front desk operator who didn't smile, or the one service attendant, in the waiters, waitresses, I don't even have different names now, who may have put the plate down too hard on the table or spilled the drink onto the shirt or the dress of the visitor, they remember that encounter more than the best swim on, the, on any beach in Tobago. The Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute has trained approximately 1,300 students from 2012 to 2013 in certificate and degree programs in areas such as baking and pastry arts, tour guiding, culinary arts, and tourism and hospitality studies. From the Division of Tourism and Transportation, I'm Juliet James reporting for Let's Talk Tobago. It's a long weekend and of course you're already in vacation mode and somehow when we think of Easter we associate it with Tobago. So this week as you're winding down we wanted to ask what's been your best Easter in Tobago? This is what you said. My best Easter in Tobago now is my focus is more on Jesus Christ. You know I know he was born he came and he died for his people sins of the world the people of the world and he has risen so i spend my time reading and concentrating on him i am a retiree right so i try to take life very easy well my best easter would be for the family i am a family man i just enjoy being home in my family i don't party i don't fit i'm a church man really and so that I enjoy um, the family and opportunity to be with the family. Well, I'll carry the children I'm out for in Plymouth. Sometimes I'll go harvest, you know, on harvest on Plymouth side. And on Tuesday, I'll carry them to watch the goat race and have a nice family day with them. I plan to spend the Easter great, kind, and I like to help my mother out during and down so I can have a great Easter with my mom. My best Easter is. Um, Easter Tuesday in Buku, where I'm from, with the goat race and those things. It's not like long ago, so right now I just do the best I can to celebrate. The media festivity is enjoyable for everybody, children, family, everybody's come out to enjoy themselves, like more pleasant and that kind of thing. You know, my office come out just now, which is better, and I go enjoy myself, so I hope everybody do the same thing. The best thing about Easter is about the goat race and the crab race and stuff that we have in Tobago. And, that, and the kiddies part with the Easter bonnets and stuff. Carry out my chair into the beach and, you know, make sure everything okay and, you know. But Easter is kind of important. Easter is the resurrection of Christ, so, you know, you just always have to um, study Christ, you know. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago to a close. Remember, you can now send us your comments to information at tha.gov.tt or visit us at www.tha.gov.tt. Like us on Facebook and also add us to your YouTube playlist. I'm Colleen Holder and on behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a safe and enjoyable week. As we go, here's a final look at the Buku Integrated Facility.